Presentation devotees, please accept my humble obeisances. All yours is Sri Prabhupada and Guru Maharaj. Uh, today we will want to hear two broad themes. One is uh, the last question of the sages from the first chapter and end, the sixth question. And then uh, we'll start to hear the answers for the first two questions from the second chapter today, uh, which, is in, uh, which is about devotional service. Yeah. Rather than Mati, when are you ready, you can start, Mati. Sure, thank you so much. Hare Krishna to all dear devotees, please accept my humble obeisances. All the Shri Srila Prabhupada and Guru Maharaj. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Narayanam Namaskrutyam Naram Chaiva Narutamam Devim Saraswati Vyasam Tato Jayam Udirayet. Nasta Prayeshu Abhadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavate Uttama Shloke Bhaktir Bhavati Naisriti. Today we are reading from Srimad Bhagavatam, Chapter 1, Chapter 1, Text 19. Text 19. We never tire of hearing the transcendental pastimes of the personality of Godhead, who is glorified by the hymns and prayers. Those who have developed a taste for the transcendental relationship with him relish hearing of his pastimes at every moment. Text 20th. Lord Sri Krishna, the personality of Godhead, along with Balram, played like a human being and so masked he performed many superhuman acts. Text 21, knowing well that the age of Kali had already begun, we are assembled here in this holy place to hear at great length the transcendental message of Godhead and in this way perform sacrifices. Text 22, we think that we have met your goodness by the will of the providence just so that we may accept you as captain of the ship for those who desire to cross the difficult ocean of Kali which deteriorates all good qualities of the human being. Text 23. Since Sri Krishna, the absolute truth, the master of all mystic powers, has departed for his own abode, please tell us to whom the religious principles have now gone for the shelter. Thus ends the Bhakti Vedanta purport of first chapter, first chapter of Srimad Bhagavatam entitled Questions by the Sages. Next. Chapter 2, Divinity, the Divine Service. Text 1, Ukra Sarva, Sutta Goswami, the son of Roma Harshan, be began fully satisfied by the perfect questions of the Brahmanas, thanked them, and thus attempt attempted to reply. Text 2, Sri Sutta Goswami said, Let me offer my respectable obeisances unto that great sage, Sukadeva Goswami, who had entered the hearts of all when he went away to take up the renounced order of life sannyasa, leaving home without undergoing reformation by the scared threat or the ceremonies observed by the higher caste, his father, Vyasadeva, fearing separation from him, cried out, O oh my son, indeed only the trees which were observed in the same feeling of separation echoed in response to the big grieved father, Text the three. Let me offer my respectable obeisances unto him, Sukha, the spiritual master of all sages, the son of Vyasudeva, who, out of his great compassion for those gross materialistic who struggled to cross over the darkest religions of the material existence, spoke this most confidential supplement to the cream of the Vedic knowledge after having the personality assimilated it by experience. Text 4. Before reciting the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is very means of con con conquest, one should offer respectable obeisances unto the personality of Godhead Narayana, unto Naranarayana Rishi, the supermost human being, unto the mother Sar Saraswati, the goddess of learning, and unto Sri Vyasadeva, the author. Text 5. O oh, sages, I have been justly questioned by you. Your questions are worthly because they relate to Lord Krishna. So are of the relevance to the world's welfare. Only questions of these sort are capable of completely satisfying the self. 
X6. The super occupational dharma for all the humanity is that by which men can attain to the loving devotional service unto the transcendental Lord. Such devotional service must be unmotivated and uninterrupted to completely satisfy the self. Text seven. By rendering the devotional service unto the personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna, one immediately acquires the causeless knowledge and the detachments from the world. Text eight. The occupational activities a man performs according to his own position are only so much useless labor if they do not provoke at attractions for the message of the personality of the Godhead. Text nine. All occupational engagements are certainly meant for ultimate liberation. They should never be performed for the material gain. Furthermore, according to sages, one who is engaged in the ultimate occupational service should never use the material gain to cultivate sense gratification. Text 10. Life's desire should never be direct towards the sense gratification. One should desire only to the healthy life or self preservation. Since a human being is meant for the inquiry about the absolute truth, nothing else should be the goal of one's work. Text 11. Learn the transcendentalist who knows the absolute truth. Call this non-dual substance Brahmana, Paramatma or Bhagavan. Text 12. The seriously inquis inquisitive student of the sage well equipped with the knowledge and detachment re release that the absolute truth by rendering devotional service in the terms of which he had heard from the Vedanta Sutra. Text 13. O best among the twi uh, twice born, it is therefore concluded that the highest perfection one can achieve by the discharging the duties prescribed for one's own occupation according to the caste division and orders of life is to please the personality of Godhead. Thank you, Prabhuji Hare Krishna. Thank you so much, Prabhuji Hare Krishna. So, um, the context is that uh, we're in the first canto, first chapter of the Srimad Bhagavatam. Yesterday, we heard how the conversation is between uh, uh, sages of Namisharanya and Sutta Goswami. And uh, they are uh, first uh, respected him by nicely offering a seat, Vyasasana. And then they appreciated his good qualities. And why he's qualified? Because he's coming in the bona fide line of disaffiliation. And how he got the mercy of uh, spiritual masters because of his qualities like gentle and being humble like that. And then after glorifying him and appreciating him and taking the humble position before him, they asked uh, questions. So we heard the first five questions yesterday. First five questions in the first chapter were, uh, uh, what is the ultimate and absolute good for all people, everyone like that? That was the first question. And the second question was, what is the essence of all scriptures? Don't tell us we'll, everything from all scriptures. Tell us what is the essence? Because uh, especially... As a Kaliuga comes, people cannot understand everything. They don't have so much time, so much uh, attention span. Uh, they cannot go through all the scriptures. They don't have so much intelligence. So please tell us the essence of scriptures. That was the second question. Third question was, please tell us the purpose which Lord, for which Lord Krishna appeared as a son of Devaki and was Deva like that. And the fourth question was, um, asking about how they want to know about Krishna's activities as Purushavataras, that means Krishna when he comes as incarnations, uh, that we'll hear about it in later chapters. Uh, how, what did you do uh, like that, as Purushavataras, like that? That's the fourth question. Fifth question was about, please tell us about different incarnations of Krishna, uh, different avatars he comes, and uh, tell us about their activities also like that, they asked. Now they are proceeding towards the sixth question. You see, today, so I lost the marker when the 19th was today, right? 19th was here. Yeah. The 19th was uh, this section after asking the fifth question, they are glorifying the Krishna Kada first before asking the sixth question. What is the saying? We never become tired of hearing the transcendental positives of Krishna, who is glorified by hymns and prayers. And those who have developed relationship with Krishna, they really should 
past tense every moment. That means they don't get tired. Oh my God, do I need to hear again? They don't think like that because they're relishing. They have developed a natural taste for hearing Krishna Kada like that. Even as we practice bhakti more and more, we will also relish Krishna Kada more and more, whether it's hearing or whether it's reading Srimad Bhattam like that. So now the purport, Prabhupada makes a few points. One is that the Vedic literature, the, like the Ramayana, Mahabharata, Puranas, they are all um, uh, factual pa history, not just some made-up stories, not mythology. That's the wrong term to use for Vedic scriptures. And they remain ever fresh for people reading it. They, we get newer and new insights as we read Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhattam regularly like that. That's the point Prabhupada makes. And mundane news is static, whereas transcendental news is dynamic processes. So if you develop taste for hearing Krishna Kata, we'll never become tired and we'll actually relish it like that. So that's the other point Prabhupada is making. And then as Prabhupada says, um, actually this transcendental literature, um, light becomes more and more luminous. That means we'll understand more and more with progressive reading and progressive realization of transcendental subject matter like that. So as we go on reading, uh, uh, we'll realize more and more. Then we'll relish it more and more like that. Going to the 20th verse in the first and first chapter. Um, there, now there, remember they already asked in the third question, what is the purpose of Krishna's appearance here? And then fifth, fourth question, fifth question, they asked about Krishna's past tense also. Now they're specifically uh, asking, please tell us about Krishna's directly Krishna's past tense. We want to hear about Krishna more like that. They're encouraging Sutta Goswami. That's why there's specific, specific mentioning Krishna here. Um, it says, Lord Sri Krishna, the person of Godhead, along with Balaram, played like human being. That means they're not human being, but they played like human being. And so must he performed many superhuman activities like that. So the purport talks about uh, that Supreme Lord uh, was not a uh, people in this world, they say, if somebody has great mystic power, they can read somebody's mind or they can uh, produce something in their hand from far distant places. Seeing those mystic powers, people think, oh, they are a supreme lord like that. That is the incorrect understanding. Uh, they just have mystic powers that they got, which is uh, difficult to get, but still they got it uh, because of their uh, sadhana, whatever they did in particular practice of yoga practice. But Krishna is not that kind of incarnation. Krishna is the Supreme Lord from the beginning, Prabhupada writes in purport. Because when he appeared to Vasudeva and Devaki, he appeared in four-handed Vishnu form first to show them with and with all jewelry and clothing like that and with hair. No baby comes with all these things like that. Prabhupada writes in the Krishna book also. And the 10th canto also he writes like that. So here, uh, that's, that's one point Prabhupada is making that. Uh, then, Yeah, Prabhupada writes so another important thing that the transcendental nature of Krishna, if we learn, we can be spiritually elevated. That we know from Bhagavad Gita, Janma Karma Medivyam, like that. When we know the transcendental nature of birth and activities of Krishna, then we don't have any more life like that in this material world. Now, you know, Prabhupada also makes an important point here is that, that while we progressively go from canto 1, 2, 3, 4, like that towards 9, we are actually developing more and more realization of the transcendental nature of Krishna. And then we will we'll be equipped to hear that specific past tense, direct past tense of Krishna and the 10th canto like that. And then Prabhupada also writes uh, that uh, fried from his mother's uh, lap, Krishna, Krishna was uh, exhibited his power, like killing Putana, like that. And then very, very young age, he fled over the giri like that. He is a Supreme Lord from beginning. Not that he has to do something to become Supreme Lord like that. Mm. But however, the, the devotees in the past tense of Krishna, what did they do? They did not treat him like Krishna because of the Yoga Maya's influence, or Lila Shakti's influence, or eternal potency influence. So they treated him like their child who is dependent on them like that. Those are the points Prabhupada makes in purport. Now going to 21st verse. So now, so far they glorified uh, Krishna Katha. They said, we want to hear direct Krishna's past tense, please. Um, and then now they're saying, um, why they assembled here? They assembled here because knowing that Kali Yuga has come. 
and then they, they assembled here to hear Krishna Kata and, and for a long time. And this way, they want to perform sacrifices described like that. So Prabhupada writes the different methods of perfection in previous ages and what is the best method for this age like that in the purport. We know in Satya Yuga, the process of perfection is meditation. In Treta Yuga, the process of perfection is sacrifices. And in Dvapar Yuga, the process of perfection is elaborate worship like that. And then he says, Kali Yuga, the best process of worship is uh, Sankirtan Yigna like that. So why? Because in the Kali Yuga, the duration of his life is very short. Maximum 100 years mostly, average. Not 1000 years, not 10,000 years, not 100,000 years like the previous ages like that. That's one process he makes. And then he says, we also have various difficulties because of which we cannot practice what is recommended for the other ages. That's why hearing and chanting of the holy name, fame and pastimes of the Lord is the best thing to do in Kali Yuga like that. He says, we know the hearing and chanting focus basically. So Prabhupada writes, the regular hearing and recitation of the Bhagavatam is the only way for self-realization like that. So that is the important principle Prabhupada is sharing. This is called Bhagavata Dharma. So Prabhupada introduces the term Bhagavata Dharma in this purport. Now, go to the next verse, 22nd verse. Now they are appreciating Sutta Goswami saying that we mature goodness only by the will of Krishna, by the will of providence, just so that we can accept you as the captain of our ship. And the ship is the message of Bhagavatam, like that Prabhupada elaborates in the purport. Basically, in Kali Yuga, uh, it's very difficult to utilize our life for self-relation because there are so many distractions, so many bad qualities around for all of us and the people around us. But uh, we should be cautious in this age. If you want to cross this ocean of age of Kali, Kali Yuga itself is compared as an ocean here. Remember this analogy used in different contexts uh, with different things. In this context, the ocean is described as an age of Kali and then and the boat itself is referred to as a message of Srimad Bhagavatam, and the captain of the boat is referred as uh, Bonafide Spiritual Master, like Sutta Goswami in this particular case, like that. There are other descriptions using this analogy, like how winds are the favorable, Veda sometimes is mentioned, winds are as Krishna's mercy mentioned, something like that, sometimes like that, different analogies are used, same analogies used in different ways. In this context, Prabhupada is using like this. So the point is, they are recognizing Krishna's mercy on them, that they got the benefit of association of uh, spiritual master like Sudha Goswami. That is the point being made here. They are speaking out of gratitude. Now they proceed, after they describe the glories of Krishna Kata and are appreciating their good fortune of meeting him, now they are asked the final sixth question in this chapter now. The sixth question of this chapter, they say, since say, Krishna already disappeared from this world, departed from this world, world, then please tell us whom the religious principles have now gone for shelter. So generally, uh, Krishna's purpose in coming in Bhagavad Gita says, Dharma Samstapan Adhaya, that means to establish religious principles. So now that Krishna has gone, so where are the religious principles taking shelter? Like that, uh, they are asking. This question also will be answered in the next coming chapters. Basically, second and third chapters will have answers to all the six questions. Now, today we'll see the answers for the first two questions, and then uh, we'll proceed in the next next couple of days. We'll see the other answers also coming up. Of course, the answer is actually Srimad Bhagavatam is the shelter for all religious principles, but we'll hear that coming up. Now, going to the second chapter. So, first chapter we heard uh, sages of Namisharanya conversation with Sudha Goswami. In that conversation, they respected the position of Sudha Goswami and they took a submissive position uh, asking, placing questions before Sudha Goswami. The six questions we had. Now, second second chapter starts with uh, Sudha Goswami's response. So, he say, the first verse is saying that Sudha Goswami, who is the son of Ramarshana, was fully satisfied by the perfect questions of the Brahmanas. And he thanked them and started to reply. What is with this telling? This telling, he was satisfied by hearing their questions. And he, and he feeling gratitude for their questions like that. Why? That is explained in the next verse. In the second verse, he says, uh, actually, next verse, following verse, third verse. 
basically the point is that because these questions are related to Krishna, is getting the opportunity to think about Krishna, remember Krishna, and speak Krishna Kada. That is why he is grateful for them and is satisfied with their questions like that. So instead of talking some mundane topic, they are asking something that will help him to remember Krishna. So it's beneficial for him and for the audience both. Now go into text to uh, Sutu Goswami starts to speak now. He says, uh, and how does he speak is important principle also for us. First of all, he is offering obeisances to his superiors, spiritual masters, Vyas Deva, like that we'll see. He's offering. So that is usual. That is a sign of humility. That means when somebody understands that we are only able to speak something or do something because of the mercy and blessings of the superiors, when we understand that, we naturally pray for the our spiritual master and superior Krishna and uh, superior blessings always. That's the essential principle to learn here also. Now going to the second verse. He says, my respectable obeisances to Sukadeva Goswami, who enters the heart of all. That means he's capable of entering the hearts of all like that. Attracting everybody's heart like that, he's saying. And then, he, he went away. As soon as born, we hear the Sukadeva Goswami is born like a, with a, already he was a teenager when he's born. So then, uh, when he's born, he immediately left the home. He didn't want to stay at home and, and get born with something like that. He's already liberated soul at birth, like that Prabhupada describes in the purport, actually. He left home. When he was going like that, without any purificatory ceremonies being done, that means no sacred therapy ceremony by spiritual master, uh, no study of Vedas, like that, he left directly without any purificatory ceremonies, uh, what we call it samskaras usually. So, without that he left then Vasudeva was feeling separation from him so he's crying out oh my son like that is crying out and when he's crying out Sukhdeva Goswami did not return back and come back did not see back and come back it seems but the trees were also crying out oh my son like that echoing the response back from uh, Vasudeva so Jiva Goswami indicates two things in, in relation to these trees like that in the commentary one is the uh, Krishna himself is sounding through the trees uh, and responding, oh my son, like that. He's also uh, crying for separation like that. That's one thing Jiva Goswami explains. And the thing he explains is how the trees uh, loved Sukhdeva Goswami for his, for his purity, it seems. Like how similarly Vasudeva loved him, trees loved him, Sukhdeva Goswami, for his purity, it seems. And that's what is being described here. Now, in the purport, uh, Prabhupada mentions something uh, helpful for us to understand. Um, one of the principles he explains is that how uh, when somebody gets, uh, somebody is, all of us take birth first. And then when we get a spiritual initiation from the spiritual master, or rather se second initiation is being described here, when the spiritual master gives a sacred thread, then he is referred as Dvija, that means twice born. And then when he studies the Vedas under the guidance of spiritual master, scriptures under the guidance of spiritual master, then he becomes a learned Brahmana. It's called as the term he proposed introduces is Vipra. And that person who learned the Vedas from spiritual master, uh, who became Vipra now from Dija to Vipra, and as he gains a progressive realization of Supreme Lord and him, himself and Supreme Lord like that, uh, then he's situated in devotion service. So then he becomes a Vaishnava, like that. So now point Prabhupada drives to the point here is that a Brahmana should become a Vaishnava. So self-realized Brahmana, self-realized learned Brahmana is nothing but Vaishnava like that. So Vaishnava is in a superior position compared to Brahmana. That's one thing we can understand from here. This is a principle that Bhakti Dhan Sasutakura also dealt with in his lifetime to clarify for people. Then the next, next paragraph, Prabhupada talks about um, the ultimate aim of Varnashma is to make somebody a Vaishnava. Let me end. The point being made here is irrespective of somebody's born in Sudra, Vyasya, Brahmana, Kshetriya, doesn't matter whatever situation they are in. If he's acted by, by pure devotee, spiritual master, and if we take the that person that takes the instruction of pure devotee, spiritual master, and follows under his direction, then he can become a Vaishnava. That's the point uh, Prabhupada makes in the purport also. 
that is the mercy of a spiritual master is essential for us to develop bhakti and become Vaishnava. That's the point. So now next verse, uh, text number three. You know, after offering, he further offers obeisance to Sukadeva Goswami, uh, saying that uh, out of his own compassion for the gross materialists who are always engaged in sense gratification, enjoyment, enjoyment, like that, out of mercy for them, he spoke this most confidential supplement to the cream of Vedic knowledge. What is the cream of Vedic knowledge? Vedanta Sutra. That means, after writing all the Vedic literature, whereas they've also compiled a short aphorism list uh, called Vedanta Sutra. Short principle like Jarmadi Asyataha, Atato Brahma Jignasa, like that. Short term, short phrases. So, that is called as cream of Vedic knowledge. And he's saying, this Bhagavatam is a confidential supplement of the Vedic uh, Vedanta Sutra or Brahma Sutras like that. The same way is expressed differently is, is Bhagavatam is the natural commentary on the Vedanta Sutra where the author Vyasadeva himself explaining the Vedanta Sutra for us to understand. Instead of us interpreting in different different ways which is which is done by Mayavadi it seems Prabhupada writes in purport. So which is not a right interpretation the way to understand Vedanta Sutra is by studying Srimad Bhavatam. That's the point. Prabhu also makes it clear in the purport. And then uh, he's also saying Sukhdi Goswami personally assimilated it. That's why he's sharing this knowledge with us out of compassion for others. That's the point um, in the verse also. So now we talked about the how in supplement to Vedic uh, Vedanta Sutra, Srimad Bhavatam. Now Purput also talks about how when somebody is trying to enjoy, 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 they cannot really be happy. Uh, the analogy is given is a camel which is chewing on the thorns. Then uh, blood is coming in the mouth because the tongue is getting cut with the thorns. So, but he likes the taste of the blood. He doesn't realize he's damaging his tongue through the, this like this. And his own blood only like that is eating. Like that, the materialist uh, is engaged in hard work like that. So he cannot be permanently happy. Similarly, uh, Gnanis also cannot be happy. Whereas, um, so now, the Bhagavata Purana is, is given to us so that uh, uh, Prabhupada writes in the purport that if we have a desire to get out of this material world, a desire to get to a permanent place where the eternal happiness can be achieved in the devotion service position to Krishna, then this Bhagavatam and Vedanta Sutra are for such, for such a person like that. For that purpose is written like that he describes. And then, uh, the last point in the purport says that um, uh, the Mahavadis cannot access the Bhagavatam because they don't have the right attitude uh, towards Krishna, towards Bhakti or anything like that. That is why. Whereas, if somebody wants to get out of this world uh, and they accept the shelter of spiritual master and take shelter of Bhagavatam, they can benefit it like that. They can benefit to realize the Supreme Lord in different forms like that. Is right. Now, text 4. Uh, so his humility you can see further that uh, he is offering obeisance to more superiors now. Specifically, uh, this is the verse we recite every day. Narayanam Namaskritya Naram Chaiva Narottamam Devim Saraswatim Vyasam Tato Jayam Udhirayak. He is offering obeisance to Narayana, Lord Narayana and also Narayan Rushi uh, because Narayan Rushi spoke Bhagavatam to Naradamani. We heard in the 12th canto later. And then also, um, Burjan Prabhu describes that uh, Vyasadeva, he is offering obeisance to Vyasadeva and Saraswati also. Apparently, Vyasadeva spoke Bhagavatam to Saraswati Devi also. That is, that is Burjan Prabhu describes in his study guide. And then the purport, um, basically, if somebody wants to conquer this struggle for existence here, then they need to take shelter of Vedic literatures, including Puranas like that is described here. And then, why is the Purana special? Because they are categorized for people of different in different modes, so different needs. So that way, people of mood, of, mood of goodness, passion, ignorance, like that we discussed in one of the sessions, right? So like that. So the Puranas have uh, easy way for access for people in mode of goodness, passion, ignorance, like that. So they can benefit from that. And then Prabhupada uh, concludes the report with saying that. Srimad Bhavatam is a spotless Purana, especially meant for people who want to get out of this mental entanglement permanently. Now, text 5. He's, now he's telling the point why he's satisfied to hear these questions. He says, 
your questions are worthy because they relate to Lord Krishna and so are of auspicious for welfare of everybody. And they are also, uh, these kind of questions bring satisfaction to the soul like that. That's the point made in the verse like that by Sutta Goswami. So, uh, the purport purpose emphasizes that everybody is trying to ask questions, different questions. What is the, what, what do we do next? Why is this like this? Why is that like that? Why is he behaving like this? All sort of questions we ask yeah, all the time, unless we're sleeping, the purpose makes a point. But those questions are not helping in ultimate welfare. But if the questions relate to Krishna, then they can bring satisfaction to us. Like that, Prabhupada is emphasizing in the purport on that point. So the highest satisfaction will come by reading and hearing Srimad Bhavatam. Now, text six. Uh, this is answering the first question they asked. What is the uh, ultimate and absolute good for all people in the world? Which is to perform devotional service to Krishna. And how is the devotional service to be done? Without any motivations, unmotivated. Ayatuki apratihata. Those are the two words used. Unmotivated means without any personal reason. I want to do serve Krishna in this way so that I can get something. Not in that mode, including the mode of getting liberation, ideally. That's one point. Then uninterrupted. That means we need to do devotionals regularly. Not that I do one day, I don't do one day like that. We do it regularly like that. So those are two points mentioned in the purport verse also. And the purport, uh, purpose emphasizes that uh, that uh, this um, without motivation, right? The, uh, without motivation, we talked about Ahetuki. That means uh, without any motivation of material enjoyment like that. So the, the material enjoyment, philosophical speculation. Uh, like Dr. Goswami says also, Anyabilashata Shunyam. That means without any material desires. Jnana Karmadi Anavrutam. That means without any fruitive intentions and philosophical speculation like that. So that's what Rupa writes. Then, um, so yeah, that is a, that will reach to complete satisfaction for soul, soul level. Otherwise, we don't get full satisfaction by trying to enjoy senses. Now, going to the text seven. Uh, this is the answer to the second question. Second question was, what is the essence of all scriptures tell us? Which is both are the same, basically. It says, by rendering devotional service to Krishna, Bhakti Yoga, one immediately acquires causeless knowledge and detachment from the world. So the point is, somebody may think, I first acquire knowledge like Nana Yogi, or first I will acquire detachment like a yogi um, before starting bhakti. No, that's not required. Bhakti itself is the main path. Uh, while doing bhakti, we'll develop the knowledge and detachment also. What kind of knowledge we'll get? Knowledge of Krishna's sweetness, knowledge of Krishna's form, knowledge of Krishna's qualities like that. That we'll get. And then, and then this knowledge is uh, free of a uh, knowledge of causeless knowledge, it says, right? What is that causeless knowledge? Uh, Jeeva Goswami describes knowledge of desire. Uh, basically, knowledge that is free of desire of any wanting liberation also. That That is what is the causeless in this situation. So, in the purport, so basically, uh, the way we can develop detachment is while we practice bhakti, we'll develop positive attraction for Krishna. Through that, we can develop detachment like that. That's the point emphasized in the purport for us. We go into the text 8. He says, uh, so the occupational duties that we do are only useless labor if they don't provoke attraction for Krishna. So that means our main activity is to develop attraction for Krishna by performing bhakti like that. That's the main activity. Not our main goal is not to make money, 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 money like that. Money can be made for what is mentioned next verse so that we can practice bhakti like that. When the text 9 describes the all occupational engagements are meant for ultimate liberation. They should never be performed for material gain. And we should not use material gain for cultivating sense gratification like that. General tendency is people want to do dharma or worship to get money, ardha. And they get ardha to enjoy senses like that. So instead of that protocol, do occupation duties so that we can develop bhakti. We can make time for bhakti. We have to do work. We earn money to live ourselves. But that should not be the main goal. That should be the goal to support. That should be supporting the ultimate goal of performing bhakti like that. So now text 10. Uh, so life's desires. So even our desires should not be uh, for, uh, directed towards sense gratification. Advice to be to inquire about Krishna. That should be the ultimate goal for us. 
uh, that means we need to use our senses only for uh, living a life healthily, uh, peacefully, to practice bhakti like that. That's the point. But not go for unrestricted sense enjoyment. Trouble that's in the purport. That means even uh, marriage life is meant for progeny like that, not for unrestricted sense enjoyment like that. Now, the way to do that is when we are always pursuing bhakti and how to grow in bhakti more and more, then naturally we will not be attracted to doing other things that are opposed to bhakti or not favorable to bhakti like that. Prabhupada writes. You last verse for today. Uh, this verse describes. Now, previous verses talked about we should do devotion service to the absolute truth. Who is the absolute truth that is defined in this verse? This is also a famous verse. This is saying that absolute truth, uh, some people know the absolute truth, call this non dual substance as Brahman, Paramatma, and Bhagwan. The point is, Bhagwan feature of the Lord, personality of Godhead, is the highest feature. That includes relation of Bhagwan feature includes the relation of the lower features also. Other, other features are Paramatma, that is partial representation inside each of our hearts, like that. That's one. And then as Brahma Jyoti, Brahman, that means the effulgence of the body of Bhagwan, the Supreme Lord, is Brahma Jyoti, like that. All three are different aspects of Krishna, people seeing from different visions, like that. Gnani, Yogi, and Bhatta, they see it from different visions like that. That is the verse number 11. I think, oh, we were supposed to go to the verse number 13, I think, right? So this should be simple only. So basically, uh, verse number 12 is talking about the process of realizing that absolute truth. What is the process? Bhakti is the best process. Not karma, not jnana, uh, not yogic processes. Bhakti is the best process. Because the other processes, they can only give Brahma Jyoti realization or Paramatma realization. Bhakti can give the best realization, Bhagavan realization like that. That's the point being made here. And then that can be achieved by uh, hearing uh, Krishna Katha. In the purport, Prabhupada makes an emphasis that we should go from lower class devotee, third class devotee to at least second class devotee. Lower class devotee means we perform bhakti to fulfill some material desires. And we only give importance to deities worship, but we don't give importance to devotees like that. The second class devotee at least we should get to is we understand worship of Krishna is the best and we relate with devotees nicely with friendship, uh, with like-minded devotees. And then we take care of innocent people and then we stay away from uh, ignorant, uh, not ignorant, uh, the envious people like that. At least we should come to that stage Prabhupada is describing. So, and also, uh, we should not uh, we should not hear from professional reciters, people who don't have purity in intention in speaking about them. We should not hear from them. We should hear from people in disability succession only. That's the other point made by Prabhupada in the purport. Mm. So, yeah, and then last point Prabhupada makes in purport is when we just because we're performing bhakti, uh, some religious process doesn't mean we are doing the pure way. We should check is this according to the Guru, Sadhu, and Shastra? We should perform according to that, not according to whatever we think is best, like that. So last verse for today the highest perfection is to please the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So, any duties we perform, uh, this is a famous verse, Samsidhir Harikoshanam. Whatever duties we have in life are meant to be performed to please Krishna. That is the ultimate goal. Like that is discussed. So I'll pause here. Oh, somebody had a comment in the... Uh... Oh, sorry. I forgot to put the share on the screen. That's what they're writing, I think. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Srimad Bhattam ki jai. Srimad Bhattam ki jai. Let's offer a business to all the people of Thank you so much, devotees. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji.